Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So today's video is, is how much Americans say they need to earn to feel financially secure. Oh. So I know before we even read the articles, we didn't read the article. People would say, well, dummies, it depends on, <laughs> it depends on where you live and your lifestyle and you can make a million dollars a month or you can make a thousand dollars a month, but it depends on how much you spend. Right, it does. So we're wiping that all out right yeah. now, yeah. okay? <laughs> so we got that out of the way. Yeah, it depends on where you live. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, the comments. Yeah. Right. But this article probably... The article. It'll, it'll probably say it in the article. It depends on where you live, but we'll laugh about that one then. But it's getting expensive. It's getting stupidly expensive. Yeah, everywhere I talk to people, it's just expensive. And people are reaching their breaking point. They really are. And... Some people like, you know, if you raise the price of your electric, oh, the electric went up 3%, or oh, your water went up 4%, your taxes only went up 5%, right. you know? $6 here, $12 there, there, oh, the cable $8 bill. Here. Right. <clears throat> but there, there is a point that people say, I can't, I just don't have the money. Right. If I had it, I would give it to you, I just don't have it. And wages aren't keeping up with you know, expenses. Particularly here in Florida. Florida is one of the highest inflation states around. Yep. Yeah, it's insane. And, you know, I made it a point for the last week and a half before we did this video, asking people, are you think your financial situation, I don't want the personal details, but do you think it's good? Or do you think it's tough? Mm -hmm. Are you stressed out just to get some feedback? And I'm telling you, and Bill, I'm not exaggerating. I probably talked to 16 or 18 people because some, I do research on some yeah. of these. Right, right, right. You know, and I talk to the people and say, hey, what is the deal? And they're like, I'm reaching my breaking point. Yeah. And people actually use that word, I'm reaching my breaking point. Yeah. And I could see it, and I think I'm in a better position than some people. Uh, I'm not saying I'm doing great, but I think, you know, I've been lucky because I've been saving and then I'm older because especially younger people, millennials and everything, are mm -hmm. really, really struggling. Right. At least I've owned a home for a while and, you know, you're in the same situation. Right. Because you're retired. Um, but what do people do? What, like, if you run into anybody and say, hey, yeah, things are great. <laughs> like, man, I got plenty of money. All's good. And yeah, I don't care about these rights. You know, I know inflation doesn't affect rich people as much as you know and i think the middle class is like shrinking yeah getting to we've done a video on that of what is the middle class and is there going to be one so let's read this and yeah. do me a favor in the meantime consider subscribing it really helps out the channel and comment below and share the video and let's go bill let's start All us right. off so americans have a specific annual income in mind for when they actually feel financially stable I. What do you think it is before you read it? I've already read it. Oh, you already read it? All right. <laughs> what do you think it is? I think it's probably like 100000 All right. Close. It's 186000 per year. That's like double what I thought almost. Yeah. You were close. All right. I'm off by 86000 All right. Go ahead. <laughs> Currently, only 6% of U.S. adults make that amount or more, bank rate said. The median family income falls between 51500 and 86000 and I, I would agree with that. I agree with that. <clears throat> Achieving financial security means being able to pay your bills while having enough left over to make some discretionary purchases and put money away for the future, the personal finance site said. So let me ask you a question. Remember the, the good old days? Um, I remember that only, you only needed one income to survive. Yep. So like me growing up, my mother didn't work, my father worked, and you know we were able to own a car, we had a house, you right. know, we had the cable box that you push the buttons down. You yeah, know? you had to get up out of your chair you and know? go change the channel, it was crazy. Yeah, it was great, <laughs> and then you tried to unscramble it so you could catch channels you're not supposed to watch. <laughs> Put the dial halfway in between, all those little tricks. It's the young people watching this, they're like, what are you two talking what about? What are you talking about? You, there were you, phones with cords that weren't charge cords, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, we, we didn't have cell phones. <laughs> but th this day, today, it's like, two incomes minimum, but now, like I know somebody that they couldn't make it ends meet anymore. Husband's working, good money, wife's working, good money. Yep. Now they rented out two rooms in their house. 
to wow. strangers. Oof. Just to make ends meet. There's a TV series on like TLC about that. So yeah, 186,000 is nuts. Go ahead. It's a lot of money. So many inflation weary customers continue to experience financial stress with a new Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia survey finding 35% of Americans are worried about making ends meet up from 29% a year earlier. I think that's low. Yeah. I think that instead of 35% Americans worried about making ends meet up from 29%, I think it's from 80% to 95 percent yeah I, I think there's there's a lot of people that are very 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 concerned about money right now yeah and um i think it's it's only getting worse and i, I think some of these surveys hit and i think it's going to go very dependent on the demographic too you know age you know so if you hit like boomers mm -hmm. well they don't care like you know what i mean because they've, they've already worked they're retired They've yeah. got the house, everything's paid off, but you start to get Gen Z, Gen X, things like that. You're getting into a different group. You know, you've got college debt, you've got, you know, entry level jobs where you still have to work years before you get built up into, you know, the higher salary price points. Um, and there's only so many hours you can work in a day at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. So the gap between a typical American earns and, and what they aspire to earn means Americans have their eyes on this high income and they think they need to make more money even if they know it's unrealistic. They'll, they'll never make that amount, Sarah Foster in Analysis of Bank Rate told CBS Money Watch. It's true, and, I, and I'm noticing a lot of channels and a lot of people are looking for side hustles. Oh, absolutely. You know, like there's more YouTubers creating content, you know, trying to make some, you know. A couple income. bucks is a couple bucks. Yeah, so more and more just trying to make that money because right now, how many of you could go out and say get a job for 186000 Yeah, I know if you're maybe if you're a doctor or what do they say, lawyers. I don't even think they make that much, but. What, the lawyers? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know many lawyers and stuff and everything. But I just think that it's, it's unrealistic, 186000 Go ahead, Bill. All right, so earning more remains at the top of many Americans' priorities as the price of shelter, food, medical care remain stubbornly high. And they, re they really do. And I don't see any of that stuff going down. No, I mean, it's, I can't say this on camera, but if I hypothetically went and bought a tub of ice cream, it was $2 more than it used to be. Like, seriously, it, I, when I, because I haven't done it in a while, I had a binge. And I went and bought some ice cream for family. And it was $2 more. $2 more that's for a tub of ice cream. That, but I mean, that's 50%. Well, look at this. Like me, you know, I, I like hot chocolate for some reason. Even in the summer, I'll drink hot chocolate <laughs> <I know. laughs> every night. But it used to be like a big pack at Walmart. It used to be like $3 for like 72 packs. Uh -huh. And now it's like $8. Yeah. And I know, so I, it, it got so expensive, I'm like, is this a price wrong? So I checked it, and I know they had a bad season, the cocoa beans and stuff. I actually researched, say, why is this so <laughs> expensive? Because it, it's just like, it was never that expensive. But, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but what do people do with, like, you know, so, shelter, food, medical care? And you need shelter, you need food, you need medical care. Right. I mean, people cut, right? You start buying generic. We've talked about this before, where you start buying generics. Um, you, you know, you're not eating as much. So everybody should be healthier if they're not eating as much, right? Because you're not eating as much and you're probably paying a little bit more attention to what you're buying and spending, not wasting food. You know, these are all things that you can do to reduce your costs, you know, at, at the grocery store. But at the end of the day, no matter where you go, I'm starting to see that only fixes so much, right? And then discretionary spending, going out to eat out going out to eat is insanely expensive and i'm sorry most of the places the food quality is going down at least in the area i'm in it's it's i'm very specific now if we go out to eat as to where we go yeah because you don't want to waste your money on right junky food yeah like if i'm spending you know 100 bucks for two people to eat and that's no drinks other than like a soda you know you what know, it's it's insane one of, one of my cons in florida is i just don't I'm not crazy about the food in florida yeah. i really am not you know when i go to new york 
you know, because that's where I grew up. Uh, the food is excellent. Every restaurant yeah. I go to, the food is excellent in New yeah. York, especially the diners. And I'm not going to go into that rant, but it's just, <laughs> oh boy. let it me get my chair. <laughs> it just does. It just, just in Florida, food just it, stinks. A lot of places it does. You know, the we, that's why I said we're very specific. We do hit a lot of the smaller, you know, uh, mom and pop shop restaurants, if you will. We have a few chains that we like to go to from time to time, um, but we're specific because it, it kind of has started to be location dependent. So again, back to this, it's your you're cutting back on, you can only cut back so much. Yeah, if you're in our area, like the Pasco County Department, if you have a really good restaurant, you're Please like, Please hey, let us know. Let us know. All right. What, what, what would it take to feel rich? So basically it says, Americans have even a higher yardstick for feeling rich. The survey found they believed they would need to earn. What do you think? Oh, I haven't turned it yet. You haven't turned it yet. To feel rich? To feel rich, what do you think you would need to earn? Oh gosh, let's see, if you gotta be 186 was the last one, let's say 350? $520,000 a year to qualify as wealthy, up from their 483 response during the same survey last wow. year. The rise of cost of consumer goods is chief reason for the increase, Foster said. Inflation is the centerpiece and the narrative Americans know where the bar is for living comfortably, but every time they get there, the cost of living goes up and the bar grows further and further away. That's an unrealistic number for most people. It is. That's a very, very, okay. there's a very small percentage of people. And that I know that there are people out there year. like Jimmy being negative, you know, <laughs> if you work hard and you get up in the morning and you hustle, Hey, Steve, this one's for you. I'm, Jimmy's being a realist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, get, you need a lot of side hustle. $520,000 is a lot of freaking money. That's a lot of money. You're talking, that's almost, what, 20 grand a month? You know, you're, that's a lot of money. And it's, so here's something to, to think about. Like, I've always wondered, and I think it works, stands true, but let us know what you think. You make more money, you spend more money. Yeah. You make more money, you spend more money. Isn't you make more money, you spend more money. Isn't that what we were talking about at the beginning before we yeah, got it's into like, this rant? You just kind of, it, it's never achievable because you live to your means. So That's another recent report found that adults in the major U.S. cities need to earn $96,000, 96500 annually before taxes to afford the basic necessities. While well, two-parent households with two children need a combined two hundred thirty-five thousand for a comfortable life. Move out of the city. <laughs> if that's the price, move out of the city. Right. That's that's ridiculous. No wonder people are reaching their breaking point. But answer this question: If you reach your breaking point, what do you do? Do you stop eating food you get cheaper food you start you know remember we always have that joke you know we'll, we'll eat ramen noodles and stuff <laughs> we go back to the college days yeah, yeah. macaroni and cheese macaroni and cheese tuna canned tuna and ramen so have you guys reached your breaking point let us know talk about renters 61 percent of renters can't afford median apartment rents in the u.s that's freaking high Rents are ridiculous. I want to go do a quick survey in my area because I haven't been, I haven't done it in a long time, to see what rent rates are now at the uh, the apartments. What's in my the area. least affordable areas for rents? The least affordable U.S. Metro, according to this article, New York City, Miami, Boston, L.A., Riverside, California, at Riverside, California, according to the data. That makes sense. Not for nothing. Um, I went down to Miami not that long ago, and it's freaking expensive down there. Yeah, I follow some other YouTubers, and um, they, they, they come into the country and stuff, and they kind of check the rent rates out and uh, when they come here for work, and they, they post it, and I think it's interesting, and it's insane down there. Well, I went and visited my cousin's restaurant once, and they were like, they were ha having a hard time finding help. I'm like, dude, we've been sitting here forever. Where, where's the help? He's like, we can't find people to work. It's not that people don't want to work. They can't afford to live where the restaurant is located. Right. So they can't rent, they can't, because the rent's so expensive and everything's so expensive that they're like, you know what? And it just doesn't make sense for the commute. Yeah, so they, they drive away, you know, they're, they're at, 
you know, they live too far yeah. to rent there. So in the meantime, the restaurants can find helpers. Right. Because there's no affordable housing close to so, yeah, where the prime the places are. The rich are moving to Miami, but at the same time, they're like, hey, you know, we don't have anybody to, you know, cut our grass or, you know, freaking paint the houses mm -hmm. or restaurants or anything like that. It's just not affordable. Yeah. No, I agree. It's tough. Uh, the analysis comes as other reports indicate that both homeowners and renters are struggling with the high housing costs due to inflationary pressures, an inflated housing market, low supply, and demand for affordable housing. 39% of renters make enough to afford the median priced apartment, the report states, with renters needing $11,000 more to afford a typical apartment in most major cities. That's a lot. That's, that's. I mean, familiar. in the city, I, I don't disagree. I mean, rents in the city are are insane. So what do you do? You you, you move out of the city. You have to move out of the city, and you're going to have to commute a little bit longer. You know, um, I remember my parents telling me that it's like when I moved to buy my first house because I had I couldn't live close to where I worked, and I just had to get up earlier and commute, and it sucked. But you know, I got a more economical vehicle, and I had to make the commute to work. Yeah. So I I guess. I guess, you know, with this breaking point, you know, it's just, I just don't know what the answer is. I'm just trying to rack my brain saying, what could you do other than cut back or, you know, now every time I go into a house and I'm, you know, and it's like more than one person, like I just did a house, I'm not kidding you, a brother and sister are buying it together. Right, right. I've seen that as a trend. So, and I'm like, because I thought, it's, oh, this is your wife, you know, like, no, that's my sister. I was like, oh, okay, you know, um, but like, yeah, we're buying it together because we can't afford it on our own mm -hmm. and stuff, and we're going to live there. So, and me, in my mind, it's saying, you know, what if you have a, you know, boyfriend or girlfriend and you want to get married and stuff, but that's Don't cross what, that bridge down the road. But that's, but that's what's <laughs> happening. Yeah. You know, people are joining together to afford things. And, right. And things get expensive and listen, you know, now, you know, the supermarket here, Publix, you know, I was going to Walmart and I had to pick up some groceries. I never shopped groceries at Walmart, but actually I found a few things a lot cheaper than Publix. Oh the yeah. Other supermarket. Yep. So I'm like, I'll take that extra five, 10 minute drive to Walmart yeah. and buy the stuff. Cause everything adds up. Every little bit counts. And I don't remember the last time somebody sent me a thing saying, hey, you know, your price on your power or water or anything is going down. It's just going up. No. <laughs> I haven't gotten one of those either. So, and I'm like, you know, you know what's funny on a side story? So, you know, I do that car wash thing, that uh, thing, and, and I pay like $50 a month for the all, right, for all your vehicles. Yeah. For two vehicles, for the membership. No, actually, pay sixty-four for two. And a neighbor of mine says, "Hey, I took your advice and I went there." Uh huh. And they're like, "I got two vehicles and I'm paying uh, thirty-eight or 40. And I'm like, "Why am I paying sixty-eight? Because they lower they lowered the prices, but they forgot to tell me or adjust my prices." <laughs> well, yeah, they don't want to adjust your price because they're making money off of you. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude. So I, I go to the car wash, I go to the car wash and stuff, and I say, hey, why are you charging me 16 when my neighbor's down the street, you know? And I didn't want to give the name because I maybe they made a mistake and that would screw it. Right. And they're like, oh, you just got to, because they're new members. I was like, all right, I quit. They're like, all right, we'll lower it. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> just lower it and be done. <laughs> I'm like, you know, the one time the price gets lower and nobody right. tells me about it. Yeah, they're probably hurting because, you know, it's it's ex extra expense that you don't necessarily need. So that's what I mean. It's just like it's freaking everything's getting ridiculous. There is a breaking point. I know everybody. If you guys are doing great, comment below. If you're reaching a breaking point, comment below and tell us what you think. That's today's video. Do me a favor, consider subscribing. It really helps on the channel. And watch this video here. You're gonna like this one. I'll speak to you soon. All right. Talk to you on the next one. Appreciate it. Bye.